Can you photograph a wedding with one single lens? And is this the best lens ever made for wedding photography? Find out in today's video. Oh, and if you're wondering who I am, I'm Taylor Jackson, and I worked at an Outback Steakhouse for eight years of my life. And now I do this instead, this is better. Though I am still the Canadian speed champion for making blooming onions, 1.8 seconds, which is faster than a Ferrari pit stop, especially this week. For camera settings, ISO, shutter speed, aperture, lens, millimeters, there's a video over on the weekly content section on the members website. And if you're a member, you also have access to all the presets used in this video, link down below. And if you're not yet a member, there is a free preset pack, link again in the description. So here's a Canadian traffic jam. Today, a day of wedding photography with only one lens on this Sony a7 IV. This is the Tamron 35 to 150. And it's also an unusual, and as you can see, maybe a challenging day, because, uh, well, we'll talk about that in a moment. You may notice one additional sunroof. That means it's new vehicle, Tuesday. Whoa. <laughs> so dramatic. And this vehicle plugs into the wall. If I had to select the greatest innovation in wedding photography, it would be Google Maps with traffic. I had, I had, I did weddings before there was Google Maps. I printed off directions from MapQuest. That was a dinosaur. Gear today. I've been using this for the past week or so, just testing it out, and I absolutely love it across the board from 35 to 150. And I really do wish that this lens existed for every other platform because it is really quite incredible. Also, I'm an hour and a half early and it's Saturday, so I'm gonna watch F1 qualifying in my car here. I should also mention, well, this is going to be my main lens and I claim to be sticking to it the entirety. This is a real wedding day. There's a reason that I need to change lenses. I'm gonna change lenses. I'm not just gonna to stick to this for, for YouTube video, but I do suspect that it's just going to get through the entire, entire day. Part one of any wedding photography day, take the lens cap off. If you're not doing exteriors on the way in, which you should be and we will be in a second, and you show up and you try to do a portrait of somebody and you got the lens cap on, everyone's gonna laugh, it's gonna be funny, it's an honest mistake, but then you're probably gonna be micromanaged a little bit more by the wedding party than maybe you normally would be. So maybe there's a lack of trust, I don't know, maybe that's not a real thing. Anyways, here's this lens. This is a shot with it at 35, and this is a shot zoomed in at 110. Super versatility, super lens. Thanks, Tamron. Here is a tip that I stole directly from Benj Heish, of which you should be following him and subscribe to his YouTube channel. Take a photo of the world clock, because this means your second photographer, wherever they are at any point in the day, can also do the same thing, and you just sync your camera in post uh, to exactly the time, and then everything is just nicely synced. And in the members video, I believe that I, I do a little demo of that, so you can go check that out if you're interested. And the most incredible thing happened on this wedding day. We had a place to hang dresses in a hotel room. This is one, one in a million shot. Also, yeah, this wedding is Saturday. To get the easiest, best light, just stand near the window and shoot into the room, and you just get good natural lighting. I'm outside waiting for everyone to get changed, and uh, I'm actually shooting on auto ISO today. So variable aperture lens, 35 millimeter to 150. At 35, it's an F2 lens. At 150, it's an F2.8, so auto ISO. And uh, shade white balances, kind of always. Now we're off to the ceremony. Really enjoying the 35 to 150 so far. And uh, yeah, at this point of the day, I would typically be shooting maybe a 50 or an 85, or in there maybe a 35 prime as well, and I would have been bouncing between cameras. Now it's all just consolidated to one and can easily zoom around. So yeah, so far, thumbs up. Random tip coming at your, your face. If you are gonna be traveling by car in a major city, specifically maybe for a Friday wedding, you can time shift in ways, so if you are planning on a Sunday afternoon and traffic is light, shift it to Friday at 5 p.m. to make sure that you do have enough time to get between locations. Here we are. Oh my gosh, it's Liam. This week on In the Trunk with Liam. In the trunk, we got all the backup things here. We got tripods, bags, winter coats. Just in case. I've got a backup belt. <laughs> so I don't know why. I have backup pants and shirts. I have just a in pair case. Of pants and three shirts. There. I like it. Backups on backups on backups. First thing to do, introduce yourself to the officiant. Make sure everything is cool. Say 
Hi, nice to meet you. Here's your name. What's your name? For more conversation tips, please subscribe. I'm just so great at conversations. When it comes to the ceremony, uh, typically I'm on a 7200, but the 35 to, to 150 is a significantly better tool for a ceremony. I would say it, uh, spoiler alert, I guess, that it made my life so much easier for a ceremony. Usually I'm 7200 on one camera and then swapping to a 35 whenever people get a little bit closer to me. And this just solved everything. And honestly, it was, it was really, really nice. I guess I should mention how I've set this lens up. I'm shooting on manual mode with auto ISO, as I mentioned, and I'm basically set to whatever the minimum aperture is. So I'm set to F2. And then as soon as I start zooming around 50 millimeters, it becomes F2.2. So it's an F2.2 lens at 50. And then once you get to about 85, it becomes a 2.8. And from 85 to 150, it's a 2.8 lens. Uh, I love the look of this lens. This is a shot closer to 35. Uh, again, settings over on the member site. I love the look of this lens at 150. It's really, really incredible. Again, showing examples not about what I'm talking about, but you'll see one soon. That one's closer. That's like a one. I'm going to call it 114. Moving into the ceremony. I'm going to let this run a little bit longer just so you kind of see every all the moving pieces of it. This is a more formal ceremony. A lot of the ceremonies you probably see on my YouTube channel, there's like 40 other full wedding days. Typically, they're maybe a 10 to 15 minute ceremony. This is closer to an hour. We're doing photography only today, which is pretty rare. And uh, I'm kind of thankful for it when the ceremonies are really long because, well, I do like to give them the, the full video coverage. It becomes a lot of data when you're running multicam for an entire hour and 10 minutes or whatever the, the ceremony ends up being start to finish. I would say that this is the time when people are coming down the aisle that I'm getting those telephoto shots at the end and then I'm also getting those 35 millimeter shots when they get nice and close, that this lens really just kind of, it's amazing. It was very, very, very nice to use and I will be using it again in the future. Also, if you didn't notice, there are chapters down below. So if you get sick of watching the ceremony, you can you can head along, and I won't be I won't be too mad. I'll be a little a little upset, but it's okay. One of the key shots for me is always the reaction of whoever's standing at the end of the aisle, and both Liam and I are both. We try to do it in a way that we're not just like obviously just creeping, but we're pretty obviously creeping at this point. We also make a conscious effort not to stand in front of, uh, if his mother is kind of directly over my right shoulder, I don't want to stand in front of her and her son at this moment. I want them to, to get that. So I find a space that I can go that I'm not really interrupting any of the actual things that are happening and I figure out how I need to, to work to get around that. And this is one of the rarest churches in the world for the fact that one, it's great light that's mostly daylight balanced and everything just looks good. And two, there's nothing at the end of the aisle that's like a fire extinguisher or a pull station or a running man sign that I can actually, I don't have to Photoshop little things out. Or I don't have to hide things behind people that it's just very, very easy. So shout out to whoever built this church. Architects, not the band, but maybe also the band. I haven't seen you guys play in a while, but you're probably not watching this video if you're an architect, so. Let's get back to talking about the ceremony. Usually when everyone is standing, I am okay to be a little bit more at the front. I never really go up on the stage. The officiant said it, it was fine if we did it during this part of the ceremony, but it's still not something I'm super comfortable with. I can get the shots that I need from over here. Plus, uh, I kind of, I don't know, you, when people look at each other, you get kind of better eye contact between them, and that's kind of what I'm looking for. This lens also assists me in a thing that I like to do where I like to get as many photos as I possibly can right now. And then I like to disappear and not be annoying and distracting uh, for the rest of the ceremony, especially if there's just readings and whatnot that I know there's going to be that it's okay for me to come up at those moments, but I don't need to be just creeping around getting photos throughout the entire ceremony, especially if it's just one person that's doing the majority of the ceremony. I'll obviously catch the things that when there's movement and when there's things happening, we'll be ready, but we kind of stay, I, my rule is kind of how you can see that most of the people have kind of made a back row there and there's a few outliers, but I will usually kind of go up to that back row and I'll do my best to kind of stay behind that for maybe the ring exchange. Maybe I get a little bit closer, but wherever that natural back row is established is usually kind of where I hang out. And in terms of customizations for the Sony a7 IV or any Sony camera, uh, the C2 button that you see there beside the auto, 
is set to punch into APS-C mode. So for something like this, I will just quickly jump into APS-C. So my 150 becomes a 300, essentially, or it saves me cropping it in post-production is kind of what it does. And the reasoning for doing that, drop the lens cap. The reason for doing that, speed up your workflow. And also if you're outsourcing, to give that the person that you're outsourcing to a better idea of what you were looking for from that image. I'm honestly getting so much variety from this that I feel like I'm, I'm, that's my second shooter's image. That doesn't feel like it's from the same camera to me. Having 35 and 150 together as one is very, very amazing. Um, there's no other way to put it in terms of weddings. I would often get a question on YouTube about, hey, if you could only have one wedding lens, what would it be? And my response is usually a 50, maybe a 1.4, or 1.2, even a 1.8. But now I'm going to say that this is this would be my go-to. If I could only have one lens, it would be this, even though it does include multiple focal lengths. I don't know if that makes it multiple different lenses technically, but whatever. This lens. That's beautiful. Can I move you guys? Um, I'm going to shoot kind of through the window here. Can I move you guys like right here? And exact same deal as you were doing there. Whatever is possible and comfortable. There's no right or wrong way. It's whatever, uh, whatever kind of feels best. Oh, this looks so good. Yeah, and I also like, uh, you're kind of, I can see just your suit and it's kind of perfect. That looks amazing. As you can see, bright sun, the waterfront. Went on earlier and looked at Sunseeker and uh, basically told me that it's gonna be very side lit if we were to go down there. However, you can see that here in the shade, it's kind of nice and it's bright enough that I rely a little bit on the dynamic range, Sony a7 IV, and uh, I can actually get everything. So it's not a full, gonna be a silhouette that I'm gonna have to try to recover or do multiple exposures. It's just gonna be like this. It's close enough, right? iPhone also does a great job with HDR but I think it'll be good enough because we're not really here for sunset. So that's a bit of a bummer. This will be a beautiful location, uh, but we will not be here for it. There's currently a wedding ceremony happening in the room that we're supposed to be in. So I guess they're flipping the room. Look at how fancy this salad is. It's got like jalapenos. Liam got the pizza. It's spicy. And uh, and I got this. It's nice, a little balsamic. Iced coffee, Nikon Z9. A7 IV. This is the most amount of people I've ever seen. Yeah, I'm going to squad. Man. Is this alright to have everyone in this area? I think so, yeah. yeah alright. Cool. Um, so, I'm going to have the two of you just kind of in the center yeah. here. Alright. Looks great. All right, so I'm gonna add everybody. Uh, if girls want to be on the side, guys on the side, and then just do your ceremony order. Here, you're not all here. Two guys. Okay, we can right. do the group. Let's two girls. And the girls. Yeah. Yeah, and then get nice and close together. Kind of angle yourselves in a little bit, and also just make sure all your flowers are kind of on the same line. Yeah, like kind of belly button height. All right. That looks good. Yeah, flowers kind of just like tilted a little Justin, bit towards me. Both hands in your pocket. Yeah. That's comfortable, yeah. Perfect. All right, looks good. That looks good. Perfect. Okay. All right, that's great. And then Jonathan, do you want to jump out for one? Just the girls? Yeah. <laughs> if y'all want to kind of look at each other and just kind of smile or laugh at each other, I know. It's, I know, it's so, so funny. All right, that looks good. And then do you want to do quick individuals with you and each other? Yes. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm gonna make you look at each other and just kind of smile for one. Perfect. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. And then as close together as everyone can kind of get there, the better. And yeah, angle yourselves in. You guys are good. And girls, maybe just a little bit more, so you're kind of facing in there. And then once that's done, everybody just have a look towards me here and be happy with me. So happy. Thanks, everyone. And can I make you all look at each other and laugh about something for a couple seconds? So candid. This looks amazing. All right, looks good. And hold your flowers down just a little bit. That's good there. And if you want to look at each other for a few. And Jonathan, maybe put your uh, hand, yeah, even right there is good. Just kind of hidden a little bit. Beautiful. Walk towards me here. And you can look at each other and just pretend, uh, yeah, and just go nice and slow and yeah, be looking at each other, I'm not here. Beautiful, perfect. And then if you wanna to walk towards me here. And same deal, you can look at each other. And, um, even if you wanna walk away from me first and then get about halfway down there and you can turn around and come back. That looks so good. And I like that look back. That looked really good. Beautiful. All right, and then yeah, if you want to turn around and come back this way. That looks so good. And you can look at each other, kind of how you've been doing. So somewhere about there, it's right about there. Um, just so I can kind of see you in between these. So you make them smile. Looks good. When it comes to detail photos, I would say this is another part of the day that this lens really stands above all other lenses. And uh, I would say ceremony, it's like beyond, it's the beyond the most perfect tool that you can have. For details, I feel like it's also the same, that if there's a lot of people around, you can zoom around, you can get lots of different compositions, lots of different shots very, very quickly. And uh, that's usually kind of how details go. You have about five minutes maybe, or maybe even one minute with no one in the room, and you kind of got to do everything you can really quickly. And to have the versatility is really, really helpful. Also, they're having their ceremony painted, so that's nice. That's it's not there yet. We're not staying very long though, so I'll never see the finished product. We fortunately have some very good light in here, even though it is a little bit, there's kind of some hot spots, but overall, very, very nice light. And I'm gonna do a few candids as everyone walk into the room. And I typically, kind of same as getting ready photos, stand near the window and kind of shoot into the room. When it comes to introductions, uh, this lens again, kind of an amazing tool that you can get the shot when they open the door and you can also get all the shots of all the guys coming through here which is not something that I could do if I was on an 85 or a 50. I also didn't really talk too much about autofocus settings. I have autofocus set to just the full wide using every single point and then face detection on pretty much all of the time. And uh, there were a few moments of the day that I had to override by touching the, the back touch screen, but most of the time it was doing what I wanted it to be doing. And technically at this point, we're done the wedding day. The couple has been introduced. We get those photos. And then on our way out, we were kind of like, it would be nice maybe to go and do some pre-sunset photos. It's not quite sunset yet. It's not quite, still maybe a half hour before golden hour. However, I wanted to just kind of finish the gallery off. It'd be weird to just leave the gallery kind of at that. So we went out, we did a few photos. Golden hour photos, um, when you have water, I, I would love to have some sort of light on the couple. And I'm actually gonna do an editing video where I show kind of how I made this work and how I made it look natural because as you can see, very high dynamic range scene. And then we went to find some good light, but it wasn't really in the best location. That looks really good. And same deal as over there. You can kind of face each other and just getting it really nice and close together. And, 
and just stay in the sun there. That looks so good. And if you want to look back over your shoulder like you just did there, that looked really good. Awesome. And I'll have you guys uh, walk back towards me here and same deal. You can kind of be, just be looking at each other and just smile at each other. How's this lighting? Is it professional enough for you? We're done. Not even sunset on the way home. Rare day. Usually we're there until at least, I don't know, 10 o'clock or so. If you're a member, you have access to all of the settings. There's a video on the weekly content. Man, this lighting's terrible. Can we fix it? If you're a member, you have access to all of the settings that you've seen in this video. It's in the weekly content. A lot of content in that weekly content, so have a look through it all. And if you're not a member, you can get a free preset pack if you're interested. And if you are a member, you have access to all of my presets and the free preset pack is um, a few of them from within that. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. Had a really good time with his lens, to be honest. Thanks Liam for joining me. His link is in the description below. He is at Liam Good Visuals. And see you next time.